in this century to have outright aggression of a neighboring state is in violation of not only legal protocols, but it also violates the very international liberal order that has preserved the peace, security, and stability since World War II and since the end of the Cold War. So with Russia's aggression in eastern Ukraine, it, and also the annexation, illegal annexation of Crimea, it poses a great deal of instability. It has produced some 6,000, over 6,000 deaths, also some 1.5 to 2 million people who are displaced. And in Europe at large, which is also dealing with an influx of refugees, is dealing with the challenge of the future of European institutions, I would say that it is a development that is very concerning. And concerning not only for Europe, but also for other countries, because other countries care about the respect for protocols. And that aggression also was undermining the Budapest Memorandum, where Ukraine gave up its nuclear weapons future and the future architecture that matters. Ukraine is a very large country at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. And what happens in Ukraine matters. It has ramifications for stability, peace, and security. And not just only in Europe. As I was about to indicate, you also have Japanese, Asian countries who were watching what was happening and wondering, we expect deterrence, deterrence for our countries and a defense for our countries. So in this regard, what you have, you have the question that arises is, what is the future and the future architecture that matters? And what's crucial here is, is that the framework, the liberal international order that has preserve peace, security, stability, not be undermined. The values that support openness, transparency, freedom of action, choice is preserved because that's what causes countries to thrive. And in that case, what happens here in Ukraine matters greatly. Is dealing with the challenge of the future of European institutions? I think that Ukraine is receiving a great deal of support from the United States, also from Western countries, uh, but also Ukraine needs to make changes from within. Because, by the way, they have this phrase that you can give a fish and teach fishing, uh, which is better, giving the fish over or teaching fishing teaching fishing because it's sustainable. And then that fisherman can get his own fish rather than just being given it. So here there's an opportunity, an opportunity to actually make changes, to really provide a, a, a motivation for entrepreneurs, for society to grow, and for society to advance, and the economy to grow, as well as the political dialogue. So in that sense, I think there's an opportunity. There are challenges that Ukraine admittedly are greatly confronted with. The internally displaced persons, the issue of dealing with debt rescheduling, the issue of trying to grow the economy, and also no less the aggression uh, as you've defined, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the border. So it's hard, but there has to be a will by all stakeholders to really provide a, a, a motivation for entrepreneurs. I think that the society at large and all the stakeholders matter. Of course, government matters because government can lead, government can demonstrate political will in making change and in reform, but also civil society matters, as we've seen in terms of the Maidan and the demonstrations in the Maidan and even at the time of the Orange Revolution. People have come forth, they have set an agenda, and they have wanted to see change. So 
stakeholders at large, and whether you are in the East or in the West or the North or the South, all Ukrainians have a stake in the future of Ukraine. And it, they all need to have a voice in what matters. Dialogue, especially between government and civil society, I think can only benefit and bring about new ideas and growth and where there's also entrepreneurship and creativity in the development of Ukraine at large. And it, they all need to have a voice.